Well, hello YouTube and welcome to another video on my channel. Today, I have pulled 10 of my most favorite products and most often used art supplies of 2023 and I'd like to share them with you today. If you'd like to see what I picked and why, please stay tuned and I'll get started sharing straight away. Well, thank you very much for staying with me. I cannot believe we are at the end of 2023 already. I mean, I, I really can't. And before the year goes by any quicker, I'm going to get started on the art supplies because soon it's going to be 2024 before I know it, even before the end of this video, and I'll have to pick new ones and start the video over. Okay, so first up are brushes. Uh, earlier this year, I got this set um, of Princeton brushes. Uh, they are the floral set from, I think it's exclusive to Blick and uh, except you can get it on Amazon because Blick sells through Amazon so it's not really exclusive through Blick but anyway you can get this floral set of uh, five brushes I've seen the the price fluctuate anywhere from $35 to $45. So watch, keep your eye out because it does fluctuate. Um, all of the brushes are great. I'm really enjoying all of them. However, there is one in here that has become my absolute favorite and this was unexpected for me. I had bought this set. Um, I have a full review actually on my channel and I bought this set because of this petals brush. However, uh, the star of the package to me is this Princeton Neptune brush. Um, I have been watercolor, I have been painting for a very long time. And uh, I, I, I am surprised at how much I like this, this Princeton uh, Neptune number eight round. I typically like a firmer brush, what, something with more snap. Um, I, I don't typically like something so, uh, soft, but to me, this is like the, it, it's just the perfect brush. So, uh, the Princeton number eight round brush is, yeah, my favorite brush of the year for me. Now I did brushes first because I want something to paint with. And I want to share with you some of my favorite watercolors. So, um, I love handmade watercolors and I um, and I have some here that I want to share with you specifically handmade watercolors from Julia K uh, art studio so uh, Julia K is an artist and paint maker and also a fellow youtuber and she makes a uh, studio vlog she's a Swedish artist and um, I am a fan I'm a fan of Julia K I'm a fan of her paints and her vlogs and her YouTube channel. Um, I am just a fan. I have a lot of different um, handmade watercolors from a lot of different artists and studios, but my favorites are from Julia K. I will link her channel down below. She sells, <clears throat> she sells her paints on Etsy. And she also um, makes some washi tape and um, she sells her artwork as well on Etsy. And what I'm swatching out here is um, from her floral set. I think a garden set I had bought a while back. And so she'll put out sets. They're generally um, somewhat limited. Uh, you know, she'll make a batch. And sometimes um, once the sets sell out, um, she does generally have some open stock and if it's a popular color um, and it's out of out of stock she will bring it back in um, but the, <laughs> and and she's great um, you can email her uh, she's a wonderful seller on Etsy and um, I honestly can't say enough uh, not only does uh, she make her own paints but she makes the most amazing studio vlogs and um i've been watching them for years um i i i really she's she's great um so i'm pretty sure this was the garden set here and then i did buy some several open stock from her this is um belladonna And it's like a, a dark black, like somewhat shimmery. Um, it's really pretty, uh, granulating black. 
And then I also have a drought of peace over here from her. This is like a blue, navy blue shimmery one. Um, I was just checking out her Etsy shop recently, and th this is still available. Um, she did bring this one back in stock, Drought of Peace. I know that the Shimmer and Mica watercolors, handmade watercolors, were all the rage with the, like, Ayuli, I think, is the name that, that really blew up, and um, now the, selling on Jackson's. Um, you know, those are, those are nice, but let me tell you, like, um, they are. They're fun, but... The, the actual handmade watercolors, if you get a chance to purchase, um, this is called Opium. It's one of my favorites um, from Julia Kay. She even sells her artwork. And I did purchase a piece of her artwork and it hangs in my kitchen. Um, she's really an amazing artist. So please check out Julia Kay Art Studio. The other watercolors that I reach for all the time are these Paul Rubens neon watercolors. So I purchased this set when it first came out and it was on sale on Amazon for $10 for 14 tubes, uh, 14 five milliliter tubes. And I have to tell you, I cannot believe how much I have used this set over the past year. As you can see, um, I, I've used up almost all of the five milliliters. Um, and how I've done that and why I've done that is because I really enjoyed using these colors as mixing sets, like as a mixing color. So what I did is I put them in, I purchased a set of three of these tins off Amazon, I think. So I put them in a tin, um, you know, in pans, and I've I've topped them off. Like I've, so I've, I've in, in a year, y'all, I used these up like, almost hit pan and needed to fill them up again. Like I just filled these up and I've used them again. Um, so I have really loved these. These have been like my, some of my favorite and most used watercolors. That's why they're here. So I like these because I like to mix them in with other colors, with other paints and things like that. I will uh, show you what I mean. You know what? Let's do it with um, Belladonna. From, from Julia Kay's art studio. All right, so I've got some Belladonna here. So it mix in some, some pink here, some fluorescent pink, and it's gonna give me just a really different color. You know, I'm sure I can mix in like a magenta and it might give me a similar color, but it just glows a little bit differently, you know? and. I'm not, I'm not selling my work, you know, generally when I'm painting with this kind of stuff, I'm, I'm, you know, painting for joy. I'm not, you know, I'm painting for, for profit. Um, so I, I am like loving these watercolors, uh, and I think they're gorgeous. And then this brings me to my next, uh, product that I really love, which is water soluble graphite for the same reason. I featured, um, uh, some liquid graphite by Kiritaki on my, uh, channel and how I mix my own graphite tint with that. That liquid graphite's kind of hard to come by. It's limited. And uh, the other things that I love, which I haven't featured on my channel yet, which I actually like more, are these uh, Lyra, Lyra water soluble graphite sticks. Um, they come in sets of three. You can get them on Amazon or you can buy them open stock at Blick. Uh, they're a couple dollars a stick and it's a really thick stick of just water soluble graphite. And I like this because you can carry, I carry this, I carry one in my, um, travel like plein air sketchbook uh, sketch bag um they're not messy and uh this is why i like them so you can draw with them um um you can uh, then paint with them And they're so inexpensive. They're just, like I said, a few dollars a stick. They're lots of fun to play with. And so you can use them like that. Um, you can, and this is a 9B, so this is rather dark. You know, this is going to lay down a lot of graphite. But, um, and they just dissolve and wet, you know, 
rewet so beautifully. Um, so that's a lot of fun. And then I really like to mix the um, water soluble graphite with uh, paint. So uh, I, and specifically um, these neon colors, see, as you can see, like they're so pretty when they're blended together. Um, and it's nice because you can then also just take some right off the top here and, uh, and mix it like that. So it's like, there's no mess. Uh, I can take these out and about with me. And isn't that just pretty? <laughs> like that's just right into the blue. Um, so yeah, I, this is why this is one of my favorite products of the year. So water soluble graphite sticks. I love it in combination with watercolors and then specifically in combination with my neon watercolors. All right. So next up are the, uh, Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils. I love these, uh, specifically the set of 12. I was able to pick these up for about $10. Um, I've seen them go up and fluctuate to almost 20, I think. Like with most other things, the price is going to fluctuate, so keep your eye out. But I really like the set of 12. Um, the Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils are beautiful. They dissolve like no other. Um, this isn't the exact colors that um, come in the set of 12. Uh, I have bought some open stock and um, these are the ones that I use most often. These are the colors that I use most often. Um, I think like it came like the white one came in there and stuff like that. Um, but I really, I like sketching with these. Um, I like adding uh, on top of um, my work with these. So I like to sketch a lot of times with the yellow ochre. I think that's just a really nice sketching pencil for me. It dissolves well and it blends well into the colors, I think. Um, it, it doesn't like alter what I'm painting too much. Um, so I like to sketch with a yellow ochre and these just dissolve completely. Um, they don't leave any pencil marks behind. And so as you can see, like, I'm not, you know, uh, they're really nice to sketch with uh, because they dissolve completely. And then they're also nice because they're also nice because you can add things and use them just like a colored pencil. Um, so you don't have to dissolve them. Uh, you can just kind of shade with them, um, add things to, uh, I like to use this on top of gouache. Uh, I like to use colored pencils on top of gouache and these work great on top of gouache. So yeah, Albrecht Durer colored pencils, uh, yeah, reach for them all the time and absolutely love. And that brings me to my next favorite thing, and that's gouache, of course. Um, it's no secret that I love gouache, and I absolutely love the Holbein Artist Iridori sets. These are absolutely outrageous right now. Normally they're around forty dollars. I'll tell you though, um, right now they're they're not. They're really really expensive, all of them. But they do go back down. I recently got this winter set um, just a couple few weeks ago, and I had been watching. I had been watching. I put it on my save for later's list, and this is what I suggest you do: um, save for later list. And then it, you can watch the price then fluctuate and it will, it will fluctuate. They will come back in stock and they will come back down. This set was over a hundred dollars around Thanksgiving. And then like a week later, it went back down and I paid um, $42 for it. So I do think it's worth that. And um, I know this is a winter set. I've not used it much yet, right? Because it's winter, but I have the spring and the fall. And these Iridori sets are my most favorite of this year. I have reached for them. I've used them um, more than I thought I would. I uh, just got the spring set was the first one I got. I didn't think I'd really be interested in the other ones. I was wrong. They said, I've, I've picked up, I've been really, really happy with. And um, the, the last one I need to get is summer and I'm just watching for that one to come down in price as well. So um, yeah, I this, this totally makes the list of my favorite things. Next is the portable painter. Um, I, I, this, this, I am so surprised at how much I love this. I have been using this nonstop since I got it in September. Um, I filled it with my autumn gouache, the Iridori set of Holbein autumn gouache, and I used it all. 
Um, so, you know, not only did the portable painter help me go out and paint in, in plain air more often, but it also uh, encouraged me to use my gouache more often because I use this as a painting palette. I, I This palette was so much fun for me to, is so much fun for me to use that I pull it out even when I'm at home to use, use my sets of gouache rather than pulling out my Iridori set of gouache. I'll pull out my portable painter and paint with it. That's how much I like this palette. That's how much I use it. And so, yeah, totally one of my favorites of 2023 and perhaps like forevermore. Okay. Rainbow pencils are next on my list. I picked up a rainbow pencil earlier this year. Um, and I just loved the heck out of it. And so I bought a pack of them and I've been going through them. I really enjoy uh, sketching with them and doodling with them. Um, if you don't know what a seven in one pencil is, it's got seven different colors in one pencil. And um, as you draw with it, um, you will get different colors. They're just so much fun to doodle with. And they're generally a children's pencil from what I understand. Um, but I have really been enjoying them as an artist. So I'll show you kind of what I've done in my sketchbook a little bit. This is a Lita Art Supply sketchbook. I like them. I've, I've bought a couple of them. Um, but so, yeah, see? This was when I first got the pencil. I... Uh, for some hyacinth bulbs uh, last January. And uh, so, yeah, this is just, this was just me kind of getting, you know, familiar with the pencil, seeing what I could do. I mean, I haven't created like any magnificent pieces of art with it or anything like that, you know what I mean? But um, certainly had fun in my sketchbook with it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I, Rainbow Pencils made my list of my uh, most favorite art supplies this year. All I want for Christmas is a large size of this colored pencil right here. Okay, so next up is this strange little pencil. And it was an expensive strange little pencil, but it did make my favorites list because of this little bit of this strange little pencil. So this little pencil cost me $3 and it's from Karen Dosh and half of it is a graphite pencil here and it's like a 2B, it's uh, rather hard. And then the other side is the favorite part of it. And it is this neon greenish yellow, buttery, delicious, yummy pencil. And, um, and it's only half of the pencil and I've used it up. It's really, really pretty. I don't know how much it'll translate over the, the uh, camera, um, but it's super buttery and soft and I have eaten it right up. It's like, a, it's a neon yellow, but it's more a little bit on the green side and it's so unique. And I've tried to find a dupe of this color, just this side of the color, and I've not been able to find it. Um, so yeah, I've only been able to find this open stock at Blick. Um, they're like three or $4 a piece and only half of it is this beautiful color of colored pencil that I love and like to incorporate in my work. So if anybody out there happens to know where I can get like a full size of this Karen Dosh color of the this graphic color pencil, please let me know. Um, I would be oh so grateful. And while you're down there, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. This is a new channel this year and I just recently got over 500 subscribers. So thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, here's to the next 500. Okay, and my last thing on my list is this book by Terry Runyon. It's called Painting Happiness, Creativity with Watercolors by Terry Runyon. Terry Runyon um, is the person behind Shoebox Greetings and Maxine and those Hallmark cards. Terry Runyon worked for Hallmark for um, like a really, really long time, I think till 2016. And now she's uh, written this book and uh, 
shared all her tips and inspirations and some of her artwork. And I absolutely love this book. Uh, it is so pleasing to the eye. Um, Terry's artwork is adorable um, and inspirational. And she's also a bit instructional in this book. Um, she gives exercises and shares ways to build her characters and faces, um, exercises. Um, she talks about her the materials she uses. Um, I really like uh, following along with book exercises because it gives me something to do where I don't have to spend, spend brain power figuring out the project. I can just learn from what I'm experiencing, learn about layering, um, learn from another artist, and then uh, bring that into, into my own practice. As, as beautiful as this book is, uh, the most favorite thing about it to me is this prompts list. And um, I can come in here and just pick out three things um, off of this list. And I have created a scene, I've created an illustration, um, and that's a lot of fun for me to do. And I like all of the things on this prompts list. And what I like even more is that Terry Runyon likes all of the things on this prompt list. And so that is why this book is like my favorite one of 2023. So that brings me to the end of my list and to the end of another video at the end of this year. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Please give this video a thumbs up before you go and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for sticking with me. And until next time, everybody, take good care. Bye.